If you're like me, the most frustrating thing about getting a new radio is programming the darn thing. Unless you're only adding a couple of favorite frequencies and repeaters, using a CPS and your computer is likely your best bet. In this how-to video, let's take a look at programming UV K599 using both Chirp and Quanchang's customer programming software. Additionally, I'll show you how to update the firmware on the K5. One of the neat things about the K5 is that it is Chirp compatible. And so let's start with the K5 and Chirp. We've got Chirp on the screen. We're going to start by going to the radio. We're going to download from the radio. I've already checked my device manager. I know I'm in COM4. I've selected Quan Shang and the UVK5. And now I'm going to press OK to load that information. It comes in with some instructions on how to do that. The thing to keep in mind is to have the radio on before you plug the programming cable into the uh, computer. So I'm going to press OK. And you can see it downloads from the radio. So here are my displays, and it comes with a number of things in the memory already. And these are things that I really don't want. And so one of the interesting things about Chirp is that it works a lot more like Excel than some of the factory CPSs. So I can uh, click here, I can shift click here, then I can right click, and then I can press delete. And I want to delete all 17 memories, and they go away. So it's just, you know, stuff that was... Uh, loaded into the memories, and I'm going to start with zero with some of my own choices. So the other thing I can do is go into my settings, and so I can see my basic settings, one key, squelch level. I can click on it, and then I'm going to make a change. Three usually works for me. Uh, maximum talk time in minutes. I've got a little up and down button here. One minute is or two is what my choices are. I can auto scan my NOAA channels. There's only 10 of them, so I'm going to turn that off. My gain is at the mid level, so we'll start there. I've got uh, the dual watches um, band A with priority there, and so forth. So I can go through all of these things and make easy uh, changes. Here's my welcome screen for my logo. And so if I want to make a change there, I can like put my call sign in, for example. And so I've made that change and so forth. This is logo string number two. Uh, and I could have a second one below with the word welcome, should I want to. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I'll put my name. So if I lose my radio, they'll know who it is. So I've got these other things, the programmable keys, uh, side press for side key one short press is the, the monitor, uh, side key long press is 1750. I don't really want to work with that. So let's see what other choices I have. Uh, I'll put the flashlight on and off. Uh, side key number two short press. I've got choices here. I'm going to use that to turn the FM on and off, and then side key, long press. I'll put the alarm on and off. So those are my side keys. I don't mess with DTMF settings, but you've got a bunch of variables here. I've got my various uh, DTMF contacts that I can enter. I've got scan lists with uh, channels that I can add. I haven't assigned any of those yet. Uh, these are the, the, the extended memories that uh, you have when you press the side button when you're turning it on. And so I've got mine set to the FCC to keep me in line with uh, what my license is without having to worry about some of these others. I've got the 220 band unlocked and I've got the scrambler mode enabled. And so I don't want that, so I'm going to take that off. Uh, FM radio, I can add FM radio channels if I want to type some in and then uh, driver information. So the thing with memories in Chirp is that you can add memories easily. Now, the other thing I can do then is I can 
uh, go to uh, some of these other things. Should I want them? I've got railroad, I've got via, uh, marine channels. These are all laid out there and so they're available for you should you want to. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to import some channels from repeater book. So to do that I'm going to go to radio. I'm going to go to query source. I'm going to go to repeater book. And so here I can set I'm in the United States. I'm an amateur in Arizona. Um, and then I can check only certain bands. I don't want to put in everything in this radio. So let's put in six meters since it covers that two meters, 1.25 meters and 70 centimeters. And so we'll go OK to that and then we'll set OK. And now we've got all of these repeaters here in Arizona that I can choose from. And so what I'm basically going to do at this point then is to uh, work through these and delete the ones that I'm not interested in. So I'll come back when I've deleted those frequencies that I don't want and have arranged the frequencies in a way that makes sense to me. So I've copied all of these repeaters from the county I live in here in Arizona over to the Quanshang tag here, pasted them all in, and then I deleted a bunch of them. I shifted them. I've arranged them in an order that made sense to me doing the basic things that you do with an Excel spreadsheet. And it took me maybe five or 10 minutes to, to get these all the way I want them. So I've got my frequencies and my channels all set up that I'm going to go here to file. I'm going to open stock configurations. And if I wanted to say, for example, put in the FRS and GMRS channels, I could click those and they all open up. Now, I don't want the FRS and GMRS um, both because they're the same. So I'm going to get rid of the FRS channels. I'm going to click delete and I'm going to delete those 22 memories. And then I'm going to pick my GMRS channels. Shift click and I'm going to copy those. I'm going to come back over to my Quanshang and I'm going to go down to row 100 and I'm going to paste those GMRS channels. So I know I've got my GMRS down here in 100. Now the other thing I can do then is I can uh, go to uh, some of these other things should I want them. I've got railroad, I've got via, uh, marine channels. These are all laid out there and so they're available for you should you want to. So the first thing I'm going to do now then is I'm going to save these. And so I'm going to click Save As. Uh, I use these in my Microsoft OneDrive in a file called Chirp Images, and it's the UVK599. I saved my basic radio, and so it's got basically the same name that I had before. And so I'm going to add an, a digit here, and I'm just going to call it up, Upgrade. So when I save this, I'll have the date that's the basic from the radio. In case I mess something up, I can put that all back in. And then I've got this one called up. That is the information that you see on the screen and the changes that I made here in the settings tabs. So with that all done, I'm going to go back now to my radio and I'm going to upload to the radio. And so I'm going to press upload. I've got all this same stuff saved and press OK get my instructions and now it starts to upload to the radio. The upload is complete. The radio flashed. Uh, it showed me my call sign and my name so I know that those changes were made and so now I'm good. So that's a quick way to deal with these changes here in Chirp. Next let's look at the factory CPS. So here we got the Quanshang CPS loaded and we're going to start by uh, selecting our COM port as we do with all of these. So we'll start with setting COM port. We'll look to see what we've got. I've got COM port 4. I know that's the one I want. If you're not sure, check your device manager. We'll connect to that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to read the radio into the software. As you can see, the status bar or the progress bar is coming across and the radio is loading the information here into the CPS. It was successful 
And so now let's look at some of the things that we have. So the basic info comes in and we can see that we've got 2.01.31, which is the upgrade firmware that we showed in the firmware upgrade clip. So that's um, good. Uh, we've got our function keys and we got monitor on one, the flashlight for the long press, FM and alarm. Those are what we programmed in Chirp just a second ago. Our comm settings, our common settings, we've got the, the time, backlight, auto mode, up to five seconds. That's a drawback in this particular firmware in that you can't keep the light on. The scan mode is continuous. I want to go to time operation so it stops when I hears a frequency in use, but then moves on after a couple of seconds. I got my squelch. The various other settings are here. Here's my logo string with my call sign and my name that I made my change in. I want to make sure that I'm in English. I'm going to change that back. And all these other things are here in this window. I can go into my DTMF settings. Uh, I don't use those, but here's the display for those. Uh, I can put in contacts for DTMF if I'm using DTMF codes to activate uh, another radio that I may be trying to contact. Um, my memory channels are here, and here are, are all of the memories that I just put in in Chirp. So you can see they're all here, and this works pretty well. If you just may want to make a single change, Going through the CPS from Guangsheng is fine, but being able to import from things like repeater book make Chirp a better choice in many cases. Uh, the VFO rent bands are here. These are the 14 bands that are available when you click band uh, on the control panel or the buttons on the radio. I don't have any scan list set. Uh, the default is for scan list number one. And then I've got FM radio where I can type in the FM radio channels for local. Otherwise, I can just scan and see what the radio picks up. So that's entirely up to you. So that's a quick look at the Quanshang CPS that you may find handy in addition to using Chirp. With basic programming out of the way, let's do a quick look at the firmware update process. So to do the firmware update, I'm going to start with my device manager. I've got my programming cable plugged into a USB, and I can see here in the ports that it's on COM4. That's important for me to know. Uh, and so uh, we're going to start with that. We'll get rid of the device manager and then open up the software updater. The updater is there. We'll open it up. follow along. It's finished. And then now we'll open it. Now, the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to go into our COM4, like we had before, and we're going to press connect. If it's in Chinese, the second choice in the drop-down box is English. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open it up and I've got this on the desktop just to make it easy to find. I'm going to select it. It's the 2.01.31 and the current version on my radio is 2.01.26. So I know I'm a couple of versions behind. Now I've got that selected, but I don't have an update here. And that's because my radio isn't on and I want to turn it on in update mode. And to do that, I'm going to press the push to talk while turning on the uh, radio. In so doing, the white light on the top comes on and you can see that the update button becomes live at that point. So I'm going to press update. The status bar starts to move across and the light on top of the radio is now flashing. It's complete. The radio rebooted and now I've got the current version of the software. So that's all there is to it to load that updated firmware into your Quanshang K5. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. Join me over here if you haven't seen my review of the K599. Thanks for watching and 73.